Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'm grateful for the opportunity to present our recent work on IoT traffic generation to you. The members of our team are from Beijing National Research Center for Information Science and Technology, Department of Electronic Engineering in Tsinghua University, and CRTCC of China. We designed a knowledge-enhanced generative and serial network for IoT traffic generation. Now I'd like to introduce the background problem definition, methods, and experiments. Internet of Things extends the perception and the interaction with the world for humans via connecting various sensors, actuators, or computing devices to the Internet. With the rapid proliferation of IoT devices, understanding their behaviors and improving IoT services quality attract increasing attention. IoT traffic data contain all the commands and feedback between users and IoT devices reflecting their activities. Therefore, IoT traffic data contribute to numerous applications in spite of the fragmentation of IoT devices and platforms. For example, analyzing specific IoT device behaviors and identifying security issues, web services, or device tests. However, most of the IoT traffic data sites in these studies are collected in laboratories or simplex application systems because large-scale IoT traffic data is accessible to only a few organizations, for example, network operators. Unfortunately, these organizations are reluctant to share realistic data in consideration of privacy issues. Although some organizations anonymize the data sites where removing personal identifiable information, this naive method is demonstrated to be vulnerable to a number of the anonymization attacks. Under this circumstance, generating synthetic IoT traffic becomes an appealing solution. Proposed IoT gen to generate synthetic traffic for smart home and biomedical IoT environments. But some dynamic characteristics are given as fixed parameters in their work, for example, the arrival time interval. To learn the temporal patterns in IoT traffic and generate a series dynamically, Shahid combined an autoencoder with GAN to generate sequences of packet sizes that correspond to real traffic flows produced by a Google Home Mini. Nevertheless, these previous two models generated IoT traffic limited to simplex application systems in laboratories which failed to cover the multiple services provided by widespread IoT devices in the real world. Therefore, we take the first step to propose a traffic generation model to simulate various IoT devices based on large-scale realistic data. The IoT traffic data site can be formally denoted as a set of objects S. Each object represents the data of an IoT device. For each device, CI represents the device category and the TI represents the three-dimensional network traffic series. As presented in this figure, in the traffic series TI, MI is a length, AJI is a arrival time interval, PGI is the total number of packets, and LGI is the average packet length. Given a real-world IoT traffic data site, we generate a realistic synthetic traffic data site with a generative model. However, generating IoT traffic is challenging for the following reasons. Firstly, real-world IoT traffic is influenced by complicated factors from users, environments, and applications, which brings challenges to acquire the core background information and fit it into the generative model while preserving privacy. Secondly, discrete and continuous values coexist in the data site, and the distribution of device category and features inside the traffic series are heavily unbalanced, which brings challenges to generate a realistic and diverse synthetic data site. Thirdly, IoT devices have traffic series with viral balance. Our observation shows that traffic packets of most devices are sparse in time domain, which can be formulated as short series, while some devices have far denser packets, which leads to longer series with thousands of dimensions. And the generative model is requested to learn both long-term and short-term temporal patterns for the series, 
It is especially challenging for the long series. Challenges and generate realistic IoT traffic. We propose a knowledge enhanced GAN. Our model includes IoT knowledge learning, multiple subgenerators, RSTM, and self attention layers. And we use condition mechanism to incorporate them. Next, I will introduce our solution. The background information of IoT devices contains both semantic knowledge and the network structure, which inspire us to adopt knowledge graph naturally. To introduce this information to the generative model, we construct a knowledge graph via IoT traffic data and other background information. First, we collect basic information for each device from the descriptions of manufacturers, suppliers, and users. Then we use the IoT sensitive information leakage quantification framework in our previous work to extract the user, plant farm location, and the environment information from the network traffic. The communications between IoT devices, users, and the plant farms can be detected via the source and the destination IP in network traffic packets, which contains the network structure information. As presented in the right figure, IoT devices are considered as high entities in the knowledge graph, and the user plant farm location and the environment information are regarded as tail entities. Finally, we acquire 20 kinds of relations for the knowledge graph and use the tracing model to extract the embedding of each IoT device. We use MLP with sigmoid activation function to generate the device category and the length of traffic series. For the category generator, we use knowledge graph embedding information and noise vector as input. Then the generated device category is a 0 to 1 normalized vector with the same dimension as total category number. For gradient calculation, the category generator outputs continuous results, and the dimension with a maximum value indicates the final category. For series length generator, the generated device category and the knowledge graph embedding are both fed into it as condition vectors. The noise and the condition vectors are mapped to a 0 to 1 value after the linear layers and the sigmoid activation function. Then we scale the value to the length of traffic series via the maximum threshold, which can be calculated from the real data site or manually configured. To capture both the long-term and short-term temporal patterns of the traffic series, we adopt RSTM networks. In a typical RSTM unit, each record in the series is mapped to the hidden internal state in the corresponding step and merged with the patterns of all the past records. Then, each record is generated correlated with the previous records, and it takes MI steps to generate a series with MI lengths generally. Although RSTM is known for memorizing history values over arbitrary intervals, modeling the IoT traffic series with thousands of dimensions is challenging in both efficiency and effectiveness. A common solution is to segment long series into several short series as independent samples. However, as IoT devices have traffic series with variable length, Segmenting the traffic for some of the devices while maintaining others' integrity is unreasonable in generation tasks. Therefore, we generate B samples in each step to improve the efficiency and adopt skilled dot product self-attention to capture the correlation in each B samples of one step. Finally, the generated samples are reshaped into the generated traffic series. We use condition mechanism to introduce the IoT network structure and the semantic knowledge to the generated data and capture the influence of device category on the traffic series. The qualities are presented in the formula at the top. Each P represents the corresponding distribution, and the device category is generated on condition of knowledge graph embedding. The series length is generated on condition of knowledge graph embedding and the device category. Finally, the traffic series is generated on condition of them. In the design of discriminator and the generating task is more complicated than the discriminating task, we use an MLP to keep the balance between generating and discriminating. Then the device category is one hot encoding in the real data site, which is discrete, but the generated device category is continuous. Therefore, we use Watson distance with gradient penalty to deal with the continuous and the discrete data simultaneously. 
which requires calculating the second derivative for the loss function. And this calculation in deep learning models is difficult in practice. MLP also becomes a better choice. Finally, the generator is trained to minimize loss, while the discriminator is trained to maximize it. To verify the proposed generative model, we obtain 3D IoT traffic from one of the largest mobile network operators in China and identified over 10,000 devices connected to near 40 different IoT platforms, such as logistics and vehicle management platforms. And the figures show the series length and the features in the data set are heavily unbalanced. We compare our model's performance with five baseline models, AR, HMM, LSTM, Naive Gun, and Drop Banner. Drop Banner is a state-of-the-art gun-based generative model that can generate very balanced feature series together with attributes of series. Moreover, we conduct ablation study via removing the knowledge graph embedding and the self-attention mechanism in our proposed model. This figure presents the device number of each category in the data sites generated by different models. Blue bars represent real data and the red bars show our generative data. They have similar distribution. As the device number in category tablet is too small, only our model and the LSTM based model successfully generated the corresponding samples. However, the LSTM based model have poor performance on other categories. Of generated data, we calculate JSON channel divergence between the distribution of generated data and the real data. The left table presents the GSD. A lower GSD indicates better results. Moreover, to evaluate the correlation between device category and other features, we calculate the GSD for each category and define the mean value for all categories as categories the GSD, as shown in the red table. This table shows that our model outperforms all the baselines and our model is capable of capturing the distribution characteristics. Then, as IoT traffic declassification is an important task in IoT network traffic study, we conduct a traffic series classification task to evaluate the application effectiveness of our generative model. We train six kinds of classifiers on the generated data site and apply the trained classifier to the real data site, then compare their results for contrast, we split the real data set into training and testing sites and conduct experiments. This table presents the classification results, and the classifiers trained on real data set outperform others naturally. The classifiers trained on the data set generated by our proposed model performs second best for most of the classification algorithms, showing that our model is capable of capturing the correlation between device category and the traffic series. We also discuss the knowledge enhancement effect via training models on small data sites. We randomly sample the real data site and train the model with and without knowledge graph embedding simultaneously on different sites of data. The figures show the GSD to real data of these data sites generated by models trained on different sites of data. The results for models with and without knowledge graph embedding are presented as blue solid lens and yellow dashed lens varying according to the sampling rates of training sites, where the knowledge enhanced model achieves better results. We find that the knowledge enhanced model performs well on small training sites, which shows introducing background knowledge helps to generate high fidelity data with limited samples. In conclusion, first, we build a knowledge graph to describe the background information for IoT devices. Then, we propose a knowledge-enhanced band for IoT traffic generation. Finally, we conduct experiments on a real-world IoT traffic data site. We also released the relevant codes. In the future, we'd like to extend the knowledge-enhanced band for the next generation of IoT. For example, specifically considering the interaction between IoT devices. That's all. Thank you for your listening. Please contact. Oh, that was awful. That was over and um, <clears throat> Thanks, Lena. Uh, and thanks for the talk. Uh, I will hold back my question again, just like before. And I'm calling into the room about whether there are questions to this speaker should be over there surely are you able to to activate your camera
Yeah, hello. Okay, works. Any questions? Well, then I will go. I, I was wondering, uh, while, while you, while I was watching your video, I was, I was, I was looking at this. I, I couldn't believe that there's no IoT traffic forces out there, right? Um, I, I found a few, I found a few projects that are, that are, that have been active. For instance, the Vario pro, uh, project that I, that I came across just here. Uh, can you, can you briefly tell me, for me, it, it was counterintuitive that it wouldn't exist, right? Um, so, what, how should I say, what is the difference, this is, this was my, my, my troll, what is the difference between, between the, the data that is generated through your system and the data that is generated through systems like this one, because I, to me it seems too similar, but then maybe I misunderstand. Uh, uh, do you mean, what, what's the difference between our generated traffic data and the uh, generated traffic data given by this link? Yeah, but the difference from an application standpoint, right? I mean, you're, you're generating this data for supporting some specific, some, some, some testing or some scalability testing maybe uh, of, of, of some application, right? So what can I use your data for that I cannot use this data for or that I cannot use data in literature for? Uh, in fact, I, sorry, I can't open this link because of oh, that, some... oh, that's, that's fine. So it's not about the specific project, but, but, but there's not the, on Kaggle, there's different data sets with IoT traffic. And, and, and then there's multiple, multiple projects that, that generate IoT traffic. So I, I was wondering, what's my advantage as a user of your data, of your data generation? Uh, in fact, if, um, uh, this uh, this data is uh, the the real data all generated. Sorry, the data given by this link. My is, question is the real is data general, all but... synthetic data? Uh, mm. I, I I wonder. Uh, so uh, I wonder the problem is um, the difference between generate data all uh, you just use the real data all. Uh, and the problem is uh, this kind of generated data and our kind of generated data. From a user perspective, what is my advantage now if I use your system instead of any of the other systems that are out there and that generate IoT data? Uh, in, in fact, uh, there is some um, privacy issues if, if uh, if you just use a, a real IoT traffic, because uh, some uh, smart home or uh, or just biomedical um, biomedical uh, applications uh, in, in the uh, IoT traffic from these applications, uh, it it has um, some sensitive information. Uh, so, um, uh, uh, for example, um, the um, uh, the uh, heart rate, uh, all, uh, all the uh, the um, periodic use of your uh, some uh, of, of the of life in your home. Uh, I think uh, I think if uh, just use real data to uh, do some uh, analysis or uh, or some um, classification or pr prediction, some uh, some some kinds of this work uh, uh, will. Uh, Will will uh, lead to some privacy issues. So uh, we want to we want to uh, preserve the uh, privacy uh, while uh, use the uh, use the uh, big data side to do some uh, further uh, further research work. Okay, I, I think I was not able to get my question across, but I will but I will stop here in the interest of time. Thanks. Uh, oh, sorry. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Any anyone else? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe let me ask one quick question. So, uh, so the, so I think it's a very interesting work. I wonder, like, uh, why did you use the self attention for the LSTM? So probably you mentioned that, but can you elaborate a little bit more? Because the temporal correlation to generate the data 
is it a uh, uh, so does it will, will it lead to some issue that is try to generate the data that is repeating some of those patterns so i'm curious about this part and it would be great that uh, if you can elaborate a little bit more about that design this is the lsdm with the self attention thank you okay thank you for thank, thank you for your problem uh in fact um uh, in our uh, in our observation, uh, uh, some traffic data should be uh, uh, it it could be uh, very long. Uh, um, for um, for uh, over uh, one thousand dimensions. So, uh, if we, we if we just use STM, uh. Although, although it is known for uh, memorizing the values for arbitrary uh, time period, but uh, a very long series is challenging for uh, the ISTM itself. So um, we want to uh, we want to uh, reduce the uh, length of the series, uh, and uh, then ISTM could uh, give more uh, correlation between the steps. So uh, we just uh, learn the uh, correlation uh, inter uh, the inter uh, it's uh, inter the uh, the batch in uh, different steps, and then uh, in the uh, in the each step, uh, we we just use self attention to uh, capture the correlation. Uh, maybe you can say uh, maybe we can uh, call it uh short term correlation 